most people are in there. Um, so when you can see it, when you understand that actually most of your thoughts are someone else's programming, you get power. And that's usually when I think people really can break free and go into this entrepreneurial route, realize that anything is possible. Uh, if others can do it, I can do it, you know, that kind of stuff. I think that's very important. Law of attraction, visualize. Um, I think that that's, uh, that's the key to success. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another podcast. And guys, today I'm super excited because we have one of the most influential crypto guys right over here in the office. Welcome, Carl. Thank you so much. Beautiful office. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carl. It's a pleasure having you over here and a big uh, deal for us. You know, uh, we really look up to the crypto guys and, you know, we, we love your story. But before we get started, guys, let me tell you guys a little bit more about Carl Runelfeld. He is also known as the moon on social media. He has built a huge portfolio of wealth through Bitcoin and crypto assets, formerly a cashier in Sweden. We need to talk about that. Uh, Karl Runefeld's bullish approach to Bitcoin has generated him millions of dollars, obviously, and over 4 million followers across different social media uh, platforms. He is the founder of CryptoJobs.com. Uh, and has positioned himself as a leading authority in crypto and he's regularly featured on Fox Business, Forbes, Business Insider, where he loves talking about Bitcoin and you know what, we really love talking about Bitcoin and we want to know about your story. So first things first, Carl, how did you even get here? I mean, starting off from Sweden as a cashier, now to this Bugatti driving, uh, young entrepreneur, you know, I mean, your story is phenomenal. So please tell us a little bit more well, about it. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I, um, yeah, I, I started uh, five, a little bit more than five years ago with the crypto. Wow, five um, years. But, but then I was, like you said, in a, in a cashier in, in a supermarket. Wow. Um, and um, I didn't know much about financial markets or anything about entrepreneurship, but I, I knew that Bitcoin was going to... Um, become the money of the world. I was very confident in that because I was actually researching monetary policy and um, banks and, and the, the dollar system, the fiat system. I was researching that for the, for the previous years okay. since the financial crisis. Um, so I knew kind of why banks and the dollar and the fiat system is a fragile system. So I was buying gold and silver, in fact, with oh. my grocery store salary, which was like $1,500 a month. So not much, <laughs> yeah. but something, you know. And then I was stacking some physical gold and silver, you know, in my, in my, in my home. Wow, wow. Um, but so then when I learned about Bitcoin, I saw one video on YouTube and I immediately understood why this is amazing. It's a better gold than gold itself. And uh, it's going to revolutionize the way we um, look at money and how um, people store their wealth, how they... Um, exchange um, value with each other across borders and uh, between each other peer to peer. So uh, Bitcoin really will revolutionize the whole world. And I, I realized it very early on. So I, I thought, not only do I want to put all my money into this thing, but I want to like create a career out of it. I want to bet everything, my whole mm. being on it, you know? Wow. So um, I... That's I, a big move, by the way. I mean, it's, it's a just, huge I move. Mean, it's a risky move as well. Uh, luckily, I was and am still young, so I can afford to take risks. Uh, which I think is important for people to do. Like, you need to take risks to, to get anywhere in life. 100%. For sure. You know, without any risks, you're not going to get anywhere, uh, which we can talk more about in the, in the <laughs> episode, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I decided to take a big risk, and um, I decided to, yeah, put all my money in Bitcoin, actually. Like, in fact, I put all my money in Bitcoin. Um, every time I got a salary, I put everything in Bitcoin, and I started learning uh, everything about Bitcoin, crypto, trading, investments, and um, I started learning so, uh, so fast that I started to think like, you know, why don't I also create a YouTube channel and um, teach people what I'm learning? Because that also pushes me to learn even faster and even better, you know? Because if you teach someone, you need to understand it. Of course, for you sure. Know? So, uh, so, so I was basically thinking, why don't I learn by teaching? So I started my YouTube channel. I started talking about Bitcoin, crypto, monetary policies, and um, this was interest back rates. when you really made a lot of wealth? Before that, you started? No, 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 no. So, so do you, no, this was when I was creating uh, the first initial capital. Okay. I think at this stage, we're talking like I was making not much, like 
few thousand dollars a month from this, like mm. something. Uh, but there were probably less people doing it back then, so the space was a lot more um, less crowded, maybe. Yes, but I don't want to pretend like there's uh, like a saturation saturation today. I think Bitcoin and crypto is still a very small, very small industry. It's just a few uh, hundred billion dollars, you know. Like there are industries out there with multi-trillion dollars, yeah, so mm. it's still small. Yeah. Um, and people that think they're too late, they they are just saying it so they, you know, they're finding an excuse for not. They're basically know. just yeah finding an excuse. Um, but yeah, that's basically the, the the quick little backstory to. And 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 what made you move to Dubai? I mean, why Dubai? Out of uh, you know someone living in a comfortable life, I'm sure in Sweden. You know, w- um, what made you decide to make the move? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say I lived a comfortable life in Sweden. I think it was pretty, like, boring. And when I was starting to get slightly successful, yeah. I realized that this is not for me. Like, Sweden is so boring and people mm. have very poor mindset. People are thinking backwards instead of forwards and people are stuck in their comfort zone. And I realized that if I stay here, like, I will just die in this little comfort zone. I need to, you know, break free of the, the, the comfort zone, break free of the, the shackles of the matrix or whatever you want to call it. So I thought um, I had to do something drastic. Um, so first of all, I quit my job. That okay. was like step number one. And when I quit my grocery store job, I was actually making, I think, close to like $10,000 a month already for online. Oh, wow. That's how afraid I was of breaking free of the comfort zone. Because I well, was after making $10,000, you were still working at the grocery store? Yes. Wow. Uh, the reason for that is, first of, all, um, I, first of all, I thought, you know, if I quit my job now and let's say everything goes to, to, to zero, what, what if uh, my, my, my trading, like, what, what if everything goes to zero, you know? Yeah, you don't have a backup. Because, exactly. So I also have no education. Like, I dropped out of school and everything. So, like, I, really, I had nothing, you know? Yeah. So I had my, my, my grocery store job and then this um, online uh, side business. Um, and I didn't even tell my parents about it, by the way. Yeah, what did your mom think? Was no, she no, thinking no, you're stealing from the cashier? They, <laughs> she's like, dude, how is this, how is this yeah. son of mine bringing $10,000 home every month? Well, first of all, I was not using the money at all. Oh, you were um, reinvesting it in um, at, Back then, no. At, back then, I was making it in crypto, and there was no way of, for me to convert it into fiat anyways. Mm. So I couldn't like go spending, actually. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. couldn't use it, uh, which was also part of the thing, like, how can I quit my job now? Like, I don't... like. Th- you don't have the cash. It's yeah, just going up on numbers on a Sweden, screen. Sweden, it's not easy. Here in Dubai, for sure, you can go buy whatever you want. I bought yeah. all my watches and cars with crypto, but in <laughs> Sweden, it's not so easy. Yeah. Especially back then, even in Dubai, you couldn't. You know, yeah. you're talking about four or five years back. In Dubai, even, we didn't have that infrastructure. Yeah. Now, it's become more easy. And even, I got blocked by banks. Oh, wow. Multiple oh. times. Mm. When I tried to buy or sell crypto... Uh, right. They blocked it and said, uh, this is for your own good. Yeah. This uh, crypto asset is too volatile. So yeah. to save you your headache, we're yeah. going to block you from using these. Wow. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah they, that was the explanation. I thought they'd probably say source of funds. or No, no, no. They pretended like they care about me, which, <laughs> they, which you know they don't. And then, of course, it's just because um, Bitcoin is threatening their whole uh, system. Of course. Of course. Just like Uber is threatening the traditional taxi services. Yeah. Um, internet threaten the, the paper magazines like better technology comes along sometimes and of course the previous technology doesn't like it yeah. mm. banks they don't like bitcoin because it threatens their whole business model well so you're making all of this money but you are not spending anything back then no wow okay. back then no i was um no i also there's not much you can spend like i didn't have any rich friends or like they, well, what should I buy? Like yeah, I can go yeah. buy a pair of shoes, maybe, which I did actually. Okay. <laughs> That's basically. Yeah, I know you love your shoes. I've I do like that. shoes. Yeah, yeah. I see that on your YouTube channel. You have quite yeah. a bit of a collection of Louboutins and uh, yeah. different brands. But we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah, but like, um, I would just say that um, I I broke free of the comfort zone. I think that was my my biggest biggest shift. Hmm. Um, and in, later in the episode, I would love to also talk about like the mindset shift I did like maybe one or two years before then. But but but. In my career, when I broke free of the comfort zone and uh, I, I quit my job, I, I almost got fired, actually. They, they, not technically, but they really said, Carl, yeah. you don't seem to care anymore. Because yeah. I knew I was making money, you know, I was you know, balling, like, kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but so I was, like, in the grocery store, like, looking at my phone, like, chilling, because yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, 
you know. I was. Uh, it doesn't ah, matter. Does this, yeah. Twenty dollars really make yeah. a difference to my life. Yeah, because I realized like what I make per hour here, I can make like in a couple of minutes uh, yeah, when yeah, I go home to my computer. Yeah. Um, so, so at some point, my boss said, "You, you know what, Carl? Um, You're too rich." <laughs> <laughs> no, you I don't deserve to work here anymore. <laughs> I didn't tell him about, about that, but uh, but I just told he told me like, look, this is not for you anymore. Like you don't seem to care. Like I think it's time for you to 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 go. You know. Okay. So I, and go that, to the moon. Yeah, but I, I saw that as a sign from the universe. Like, you know, Carl, like, wake up, like, get out there. Like, what are you like? You know, I'm, I'm just stuck in this little uh, box and I'm stuck in the comfort zone. So I, I broke free. I jumped out uh, without any plan, by the way. Like, I was, like, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. I was making my, my videos and trades and stuff online, but that took me, like, what, two hours per day maximum? Yeah. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with the rest of my day in Sweden? Like, all yeah. my friends are in either school or in, in, uh, in their other supermarkets or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All your um, supermarket group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I just said, okay, let me just uh, book a ticket to a conference, which I did. So I took a, um, a flight to a crypto conference, and that was um, when I realized that the world is huge. Yeah. Mm. There's so much out there. There's so many cool people. And I met my first like, uh, person who, who recognized me from my, my YouTube channel. Oh, really? Okay. And um, yeah, I would say that um, my biggest breakthrough was uh, probably that trip. Wow, okay. And that was to Dubai, the trip? Mexico. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. It was fun as well. It was incredible. <laughs> it was the first time I felt the sense of freedom because that was the first time I used my own money to travel somewhere. Okay. Mm. Um, and that was the first time I traveled alone like that. Um, and a different how, country, how totally. Culture shock. It was um, 2019. So beginning 19. of 2019. Okay, okay. And that, so I, when, I, when I checked into this uh, hotel, like a four-star hotel, which uh, was like incredible for me, like, wow, I'm paying this for myself. Like, it was very like a uh, spectacular feeling. I walked out on the balcony on this um, Mexican uh, hotel on yeah. this conference complex. And I was just like, wow, like, this is insane. Like, I took a flight myself with my money over to Mexico. I'm now in a different country on the other side of the world. I'm here because of my own business that I created. Wow. Um, and I just felt this sense of freedom and this sense of like, wow, like this is the, the start of something big. Hmm. Um, so that was an incredible moment for me, actually. Um, and wow. so, yeah, being on the balcony there and then the rest, the, the next few days there, meeting so many cool people, crypto people. And uh, um, that was really like a big breakthrough. Yeah. So what was a big break for you in the crypto that really made you big money? What was the first few trades that you did that really you felt like, you know what, now it's only upwards from here? Okay, so in the very beginning, I yeah. didn't have much money, right? I only had yeah. from grocery stores, so I couldn't make wealth from that. Mm. Um, and some people think if you take $1,000 and you dump it in crypto, you can become rich. But yeah. it doesn't work, like, work that. like that. We've tried that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I bought some shit coins, I yeah, bought some yeah. different coins, I bought some Doge coins, I bought all sorts of coins. Yeah. Ah, uh, didn't work out too well. Exactly. So, so that mindset, um, it doesn't really work. Like, um, you, then people can just go to a casino and, and put their money there. Yeah. Uh, I that think worked you, for me once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, joking. the odds are probably better there. It doesn't work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> go to the casino, it won't make you rich. No, but I would say that um, to, to create wealth, you need... Um, a proper business. You need yeah. cash flow. I mean, you guys know mm, this. Like you're, course, yeah. you're creating cash flow. You have business. So you're making money every sing single month. And then this money, you can then reinvest and, and um, multiply. And I think that's the key to wealth. To, to have a steady cash flow, always increase business, increase um, money on a monthly basis, and then properly invest it. Yeah. Uh, because uh, people that put $1,000 into Shiba Inu and then yeah. make 100000 Amazing, but they usually lose all the everything. Of course, mm. yeah. um, that's always usually mm. the case. Like we're talking ninety nine percent of the time, people that make quick money lose it very quickly. Yeah, for sure, I have very good experience from that. Like I made very quick money. Sometimes I made so much money that it's like astronomical, but I lost it very quickly because I I didn't respect the money and I, I made it too quickly. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I think many people can can um, can relate to that. Yeah, of course, especially in the crypto world. Especially I mean, a few in the years crypto ago, world, things were just going insane. 
I yeah. remember when Shiba Inu came out because I invested yeah. uh, some amount in Shiba Inu. It was a very small amount, mm. but similar. Like hundred dollars just went up to such a crazy number that I'm like, wait, well, I'm like, yeah. what, I'm like, what is happening yeah. here? I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I working <laughs> in real estate? Like I should be yeah. doing this. Mm. And then, like you said, I lost it very quickly. I mean, yeah. whatever the trades went up and down, and uh, yeah. just took that money out, invested it somewhere else, and uh, it all vanished. Yeah. And that's basically what happens when you make quick money usually. There's, I, I usually say there's no such thing as qu quick money because quick money goes very fast. Yeah. Uh, the, the key to, to real wealth is to make it slowly but surely through consistent work and consistent, you know, have the right mindset and uh, doing what you love, have passion for it, uh, which I'm sure you guys are doing right now. So you're basically living exactly what, what I think people should do. You know, do what you love and, uh, and then... Um, you can make money on the side as well, but I think the, the the core money has to come from the passion you put into your 100%. work. Hundred percent. If I, I I always say this: if you're passionate about something, yeah, you're gonna find success. The money will follow you. Yeah. But you need to make sure that you're excellent at whatever it is you're doing. If it's crypto, if it's the grocery store, if it's mm -hmm. uh, real estate, if it's whatever field it is. Yeah. Uh, but how how was the first idea of a business? Uh, born for you because I mean what I understand is that you were doing crypto trades you were investing you were making money mm -hmm. uh, how did the first business idea come across because I know we're going to later on go into this conversation because I know you've invested in over 400 different businesses yeah so how was the first business investment how did that come about okay so I would probably go back first to like the, the very very beginning so let's go back to when I was still in the grocery store when you say go back you know, generally, I, when I say with people, go back to me, it's like, yeah. when you go back 30 years ago yeah. when I started? Yeah. Uh, with us, it's like, when you go back three years ago in 2019? Yeah. See, in crypto, time, time, time's very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have a yeah. billionaire sitting with yeah. us. Is, uh, Sometimes uh, I, look track, I, I lose track of time. And I, but, but so, yeah, when I was young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> younger. Yeah. Okay, so when I was younger, yeah. uh, let's say, let's go back five, six years ago. I think okay. approximately that's when I realized that my life was shit. I realized I have no education. Um, I'm only like partying and like even doing some bad stuff, you know, like yeah. too much alcohol and substances. Like, you know, bad, bad, bad behavior. Um, and I realized that my life is really going in the wrong Downward direction. Decline. Like if this continues... I don't want to know what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Like, we're talking, like, on the street, kind of. Yeah. Um, and um, I had this realization that I have to change something. So somewhere there was actually when I got the grocery store uh, job, and that was, like, the first, um, like, success for me, actually. Like first I, I was that shift yeah. that you had. I was happy b because of the grocery Proper store work. job. So, um, you know, th that was at least some kind of stability and some kind of income and something. You know, I had some friends there in the grocery store. So so that, that was cool, but but... Two years in, in the grocery store, I realized that, like, my soul is slowly dying, you know? Like, I cannot do this. Like, I'm working for someone else uh, with something I don't believe in. Like, I, I don't care about supermarkets at all. Yeah, like, yeah. there's nothing in it for me. Like, I, I don't even like food. <laughs> you know? I, I'm not... I'm not <laughs> like food. I used to hate going to the grocery store, yeah. but after I had my... Kid, he loves going to the grocery store. Yeah. So now I have to go all the time. But anyways, that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not, I don't like to cook or anything. Like, you know, yeah. the, the point is that I just don't care about this. Yeah, you know, there I'm was only, nothing there for you. I'm only, do, I'm only selling my time on an hourly basis to, to survive, hmm. uh, which is not how I think uh, humans should live. I think we either should have our own business or we should work for someone who inspires you or you work for someone where you feel like, okay, this, I believe in this. You know, like yeah. this is... You know, yeah, I'm part you of something. Have to find your passion. It has to be like that. Yeah. Otherwise, I think you're 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 completely wasting your, your time and your life. Uh, but I realized that like something is wrong. So I started to um, research online, like how to become successful, how to change your life, like all these things. And I I I found so much information about the law of attraction. And I felt also like somehow the universe was like pushing me to learn about this. I really felt like this information mm. was kind of um, getting pulled to me because I was somehow almost praying for like. A solution like I was really like how can I make my life amazing like how can I become super wealthy and, and free and you know proud of myself because I I felt so For anxious sure. and bad I wanted to you know feel good um, so I, I was really like somehow praying to, to the universe for, for a solution. And then the law of attraction was just like coming to me like, like this. Like I, had, I saw like, you know, somehow almost like signs and videos and, and, and books and things just came to me. And I just uh, realized, okay, I have to learn about law of attraction because it seems like it's important. So I did. Did you and read the book, The Secret? 
Uh, I don't think I read the book, but I, I the read I, the movie, yeah, yeah, the documentary. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah, that's one of all the things I, I checked, yeah. Um, but long story short, I, I realized that what it seems, what, what seems to be the key to success is really the mindset 100%. and um, and energy. Yeah. So what I found is basically that everything is energy. We live in a quantum physical world where there is nothing solid in the world. Like solidity is just an illusion. So like a, a water bottle, it doesn't really exist. It's just energy which we decode with our five senses into something that we perceive as solid. Mm. And the same goes with everything. So um, the theory goes then, which I've proven now is true with my life, that if you can change your internal energy, you can attract external energy. And with energy, um, I include uh, thoughts, words, uh, feelings, and um, actions. Um, all of these things are energy. And they have a frequency. And um, since everything is energy and everything has a frequency, it's also true that similar frequencies um, attract similar frequencies. So one example could be this watch, for example. Um, five years ago, when I was in the grocery store, I made $1,000 a month approximately, 1.5. Um, this was like impossible. It was probably... Mm four different lives that you would have to earn and save up all that <laughs> yeah, yeah, impossible. and yeah. all those hours for 400 years yeah. of your life to afford that. Yeah, most people would immediately say that, okay, that's this impossible, possible. Yeah. not going to happen, and mm. they already excluded that possibility from their reality, by the way. So mm. as soon as you think like that, well, you cut it's it out. It's not going to gonna happen. So, uh, but I, I thought, you know what, let me really use this law of attraction theory now. Let me visualize the watch. Let me imagine I have it already. Let me, um, in my mind, live a scenario, like a parallel reality where I am wealthy enough to, to buy something like this. So sometimes when I was just sitting down, waiting for the bus or waiting for the train, I was imagining having this, this watch, watch on my wrist. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this exact watch, a um, Astronomia Jacob & Co. watch. Um, wow. So... Because I think it's absolutely beautiful. So you knew of this watch we, we, back then. Which yeah, I was I was watching a lot of YouTube content from wealthy people because oh, yeah. I was getting inspired by it. Okay. Uh, producer okay. Michael Manny Koshpin, Drew uh, mm. Olson, um, and I think even some house tours from people as well. Actually, in fact, yeah. you know. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so because it's a great way to visualize and of a great course. way to uh, imagine your dream life. But but this is uh, one of the examples. So um, I think the first time I saw it was probably in producer Michael's video. Okay. Um, and yeah, I was producer like, Michael's videos are really interesting. incredible. Yeah, especially for Jake. He loves Jacob and Cole. And I know. Yeah. And I just thought this is such an incredible watch. So I I I will have it. I'm gonna have it in the future. I'm gonna visualize it. And well, now a few years later, I was able to go and buy it. So this very cool. This now means a lot to me, uh, because this is like the physical representation of uh, my my visualization power. And the fact that the law of attraction really works because how can you possibly, as someone in the cashier, buy something like this? Incredible. Unless there's some magic sauce to it, you know? Yeah, it's very cool. And, and uh, it is really, truly the, and the law of attraction. And, 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 and by the way, guys, Jacob actually made that watch specially for him. Do you want to like zoom into that? Yeah, can we um, see it? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we want to show you the actual watch. Yeah, yeah, guys, sure you have to check this out. Oops. Like this is not just any watch. This is Jacob & Co. actually put Karl Runefeld's name on this watch and he actually has the moon made on the watch. Can you see that? Can you zoom in? So the moon is my logo and then um, I also have... Don't drop it now. You drop this? That's uh, a... <laughs> like Carl said, it's a uh, 400 years of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, oh, very, so very it's... Very cool, um, man. I mean, I love this watch. It is beautiful. So the moon is my, my logo. Actually, it was my first logo of my first YouTube channel in crypto and back then I wasn't making much money so mm -hmm. I made this logo myself in Canva for like z actually zero dollars oh wow, very wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah so now this logo is in my very like actually like very it's an expensive watch right of so course, it's cool yeah. I have it there I also have this um, uh, logo on a Formula 2 car um, it's uh, the logo of my office so it's in, on it's, it's just like everywhere it's cool that I have my logo that I made for free in Canva and now it's like everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's also like a, like a shadow of the past coming into yeah. the future somewhere. It's, it's, I mean, that's fun. very cool. You touched upon the fact that you have that on your Formula 2 car as yeah. well. So please tell us a little bit more about your Formula 2 uh, you know, journey. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I'm, I'm seeing that you love 
fast cars. I mean, you drive a Bugatti yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you love cars, so I'm sure that's a passion for you. By so the way, what color you... is your Bugatti? <laughs> <laughs> White with red interior. Oh, nice. Excellent. <laughs> I just want to put that in. Yeah. Uh, but how did the uh, passion for Formula One start for you? Okay, so I always loved cars. By the way, since I was a little kid, um, I loved cars. I even, um, I think actually my favorite car of all time in the history of all cars is the Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport. Well, yeah. um, when I was a kid, when it came out, I think 2006, yeah. mm. um, I thought that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And this, like, imagine if I have that in the future, that would be so cool. Um, so, you know, when I actually bought this car, it's like meeting your childhood um, um, Dream. Superhero. Yeah, 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 superhero. Like, yeah. imagine meeting the, the, the most, like, you know, what if you look up to Michael Jackson, imagine meeting him, you know? Like, it yeah. almost felt like that for me because it was, like, the car, like, the car. And I was always such a fan of cars, so this car um, means a lot to me. Um, but that, that's a side topic. Um, I, I always loved cars. And then uh, Formula 2, long story short, me and Ralph, the, the driver, we met briefly in Monaco Grand Prix like two years ago. Okay. Because uh, I rented a yacht to, to see the, the race with some friends. Uh, he came on the yacht and we just talked and had fun and just became friends. And then a few months later, he just asked, hey, man, uh, I'm looking for some sponsors. Do you want to put something on the car? And I started with just putting my Instagram handle on it. And I said, yeah, let's yeah. do that. You know, let's yeah. see what happens. <laughs> um, didn't get any business from it, but it was just fun. Yeah. And then we started getting more friends, uh, more like we became better friends. And then I said to him, like, you know, for the next year, next season, I want to do something crazy. I want to have the whole car. I want to like put my logos all over it. Really? Um, so the entire car? Yeah, yeah. So he just, uh, he said, first of all, you're insane. Like, do you know, like <laughs> that's expensive, you know? Uh, and I said, you know, first of all, I like you. Like, you're an amazing person. He's an incredible, like very, very good guy. He deserves to, to race. He never had any rich parents. He never had any, um, something. he never had any like financial backer early on. Self-made. Yeah, he's, he's self-made and he's self-funded. So he's always looking for sponsors himself. Okay. Mm. So, um, so for me to be able to, to assist in, in that way was really cool. And then, of course, I put my logos on the car as well. So I'm getting something out of it. But, yeah. but uh, people always think, oh, Carlo, you're making money from this. But no, it, yeah. it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's on the fun account. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. more like a passion thing. It's a passion thing. I go to the races. I have fun. Um, and I'm able to, to allow him to race, which is incredible. Makes him happy. So... So it's a, it's a mix of many things. Um, Very nice. And that's cool. And uh, I also did something no one ever did before. I put my face on the car. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. that's crazy. Yeah. So that's what actually, I, I remember there's a video, and maybe you guys can flash that video, uh, uh, with the Red Bull boss, yeah. and you having a conversation. He's like, I've never seen anyone put their face on a Formula car. And I was like, wow, you know, Carla's crazy. Yeah. Carla's crazy. Yeah, it's definitely crazy. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's smart or, or, or dumb, but it's, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> But the thing is... But like, see, we remember you. That's great yeah. advertising. That's yeah. the key of marketing. You know, if you just had your brand there, you'd just be like every other sponsor, because, but you had your exactly. face there. That is something very different. So usually when you go to a Formula 1 car, Formula 2 car, you look at it and then you don't look twice, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. on the sponsors. Like, you yeah, because they all look the same. Like, Why would you similar. care? Like mm. it's Painted you know, with sponsors. Yeah, but when you look at my car, and, yeah. or our car, mine and Ralph's yeah. car, you cannot miss it. Like you're looking at it and you see a face on it. You're like, <laughs> why yeah, would someone do that? that? <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, but, but then you, you pay attention, right? And then you mm. look at the rest of the car and you see all of the logos, my companies, CryptoJobs.com, for example. That's um, genius marketing in my opinion. Yeah. Well, genius it, it works. Marketing. It grabs the attention, which is 100%. The, it's the point of marketing. In fact. That is, I think, mm. the first time where I saw yeah. uh, or I learned about you. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, I'm like, who the hell is yeah. this guy that put his face on, on a car. Formula One car, like, I mean, I, I mean, I need to get to know this guy. And then I saw your Instagram, yeah. and then that's how, yeah. uh, you know, I yeah. got connected. Many people got to know me from this, actually. I've even had Formula One drivers literally in my office uh, that yeah. came here to Dubai and met me because of this. Otherwise, they would have never known about me. Yeah. Mm. Um, and team principals uh, from different uh, Formula One teams. Uh, and also other, like, just government officials from different countries that I met in the paddock. Um, other cool, like influential, even celebrities, billionaires, people that would have never known about me. It's a great networking place. I it's think. incredible. Yeah. Oh, we very like formula. It's insane. You yeah. you meet the most influential people of the world, yeah. and when you're 
really in it, that's when you meet the people. Mm. You know, when you're on the grandstand, you don't of meet course. people. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like $200 for, for a ticket. But yeah. when you are in the actual raising, like we're talking people that have to spend millions of dollars in sponsorships to be there. Yeah. Mm. So all of them are cool people. Yeah. They're all successful. You know, my sponsorship, I think I paid um, $2.5 million, you know. So, wow. Yeah, so it's, wow. it's, it's, uh, it puts me in a bracket of other people that... That uh, do those kind of deals. You know, I for two point five million dollars, we'll put your face on Springfield as well. <laughs> we don't mind that. We'll do it for a million dollars. It's okay. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, what's interesting is uh, what you touched upon uh, something that you know it's a great place for networking and for meeting. And you touched quite a bit about mindset. You spoke mm-hmm. a bit about mindset earlier, and I think that's very important. You know, when you are around other successful people. Mm-hmm that is when your mind actually opens up. 100%. And I think that's where you learn a lot more. And, and that's why I personally feel I'm very lucky to be within the luxury real estate business because everyone we deal with yeah. is successful in his Perfect. own right. And they always have something you know, that I can learn from and I can build upon my own uh, knowledge. I, you know? I, when you say it, I can imagine how insane yeah. it yeah. must be. You must meet the I mean, we've, 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 we've met from people like government officials to, I mean... Uh, crypto millionaires and billionaires and you know people 100%. from different businesses people from retail backgrounds people from real estate backgrounds people from I don't know um, production backgrounds all different types of I backgrounds I believe it's um, you know and you always pick and learn something from uh, everyone that really opens up your minds and shapes your opinions about the world because yeah. if you're not around other successful people you'll never really learn about what's I don't know new and trendy good investment places mm-hmm. Uh, you know the latest trends in the crypto mm-hmm. market and the real estate yep. field it's all about networking at the end of 100%. the day 100% so I would say I would phrase it differently I would say that you because um, it definitely it will accelerate growth it will mm. r- enrich you and empower you for sure but I, I don't want people to think that you need it yep. because um, I don't know exactly your background but I'm sure when you started out you didn't know anyone successful of course. same with me like I, I had I mean I, I tried to convince people that Bitcoin was even something like people thought it was a scam. You know? <laughs> so like there was no one around me. Some people still think it's a scam. <laughs> so. <laughs> Bitcoin is not a scam. Uh, so so um, there was no one around me that supported me or supported my 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 vision or, or had anything to, to give me um, at all. You know, it was just like, you know, um, people without any success. So you don't need them because I was able to break free from it anyways and just visualize and, and, and imagine my, my dream life. Uh, but now, when, I'm, when I am successful, when I am out there, the, the networking I'm doing now is really, really beneficial. I'm learning so much, you know. I'm getting um, tips and advice and investment opportunities. Um, and more importantly, I think, um, like business advice, you know. I made money very quickly. Um, I lost a lot of money very quickly as well, I must say. Uh, I made many stupid mistakes, like very bad mistakes. I could have had someone help me out and tell me not to do that, yeah. don't do this, but I didn't because I didn't have a mentor. Like there was no one around me that, that n- did what I was going to do. Uh, but today I do know people that um, are way more successful than me, like incredible people with a with, uh, um, mind-blowing amount of wealth and success. And some of these people really have incredible knowledge to give me um, and, and that is actually helping me now especially when I'm scaling my businesses because now I have so much um, business to take care of I have multiple companies that I'm running myself um, and it takes a lot of um, a lot of experience which I don't have yeah. I'm learning as I go um, experience is not needed you get it right you get course, it by yeah. doing it everyone starts somewhere yeah, right? you have to start somewhere and you have to make mistakes I made so many mistakes I will make more mistakes yeah. um, but at least uh, I'm always trying to make sure that my mistakes are converted into a lesson yeah. by not repeating it. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Correct. Don't repeat the mistake, then it will remain a lesson. Um, and then um, you learn from it. You can even teach others about it, which, which I'm happy to do. And I, I am doing, like, I have some people in my circle that, uh, that, that I'm also, like, advising and helping. That's sometimes. what I like about your social media as well. You're always pushing people and you're telling them, you know what, you can do the same. Yeah. You need to learn about the law of attraction. You yeah. need to learn about the fact that you can hustle hard, work smart. And I think you had a video where you were talking with someone about hard work and smart work. And that's something I really agree with as well. I mean, I, mean, I think anyone successful will agree that it's not just hard work, it's mm-hmm. also smart work. You know, you, you, you know, using your time efficiently. Yeah. So all of that, I think it's very nice what you're doing on your mm-hmm. social media as you are 
Um, you know, some people might look at your social media and say, oh my God, this guy's just, you know, showing off, but it's not. It's, you are actually empowering mm -hmm. young people to dream big and exactly. telling them that, hey, this is possible. Yeah. If you follow one, two, three, four, five steps, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them are like the mindset. If you change your mindset, anything is possible. And I'm a big yeah. believer in that as well. Yeah. You know, I think the difference between the guy who's, you know, on the streets doing drugs and the guy who's a millionaire, it's, I mean, we're all physically or anatomically or biologically the same human beings created by God. It's yeah. only the way you think and the way your mind works that yeah. differentiates us from the animals. You literally become what you think. So what you think separates you from others. Most people, they think thoughts that are not even their own. Mm. They think thoughts that are programmed by social media, by TV, by their parents, uh, by teachers. It's all actually propaganda. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's basically just somehow the matrix taking control over your mind. You don't see it because you don't know it's there. Um, but uh, but the, the power comes from knowing it's there. You know, there, There's no prison that is smaller or more dangerous than the one that you cannot even see. Yeah. Most people are in there. Um, so when you can see it, when you understand that actually most of your thoughts are someone else's programming, you get power. And that's usually when I think people really can break free and go into this entrepreneurial route, realize that anything is possible. Uh, if others can do it, I can do it, you know, that kind of stuff. I think that's very important. Law of attraction, visualize. Um, I think that that's, uh, that's the key to success. And, and also, you, you were talking about um, even if you don't have those kind of people in your network, you can still learn that. So I think it's about uh, curating the right content to consume, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be successful. Yeah. So ensure that you're following the right pages, for example, for crypto, mm -hmm. following you for something else. So that you are, even if you don't have those people physically present, Maybe you can follow the right people online and, you know, grow and learn that exposure. Exactly. So that's a good point. In the beginning, I had really no one, like no mentor. Uh, of course, my parents, they loved me, yeah. but they did not believe in what I wanted to do. This Bitcoin, crypto, trading, and like yeah. it sounds like a lot of risk, right? Correct. Which they should protect me. So I understand why they, why they didn't support me in it because... They don't understand it. Yeah. They see a risk. And yeah. if, if it's their child in danger... They want to protect me. So it's just their parents' um, instinct, you know. Hmm. Uh, and, and older people, parents, they will never really understand the new technology like the younger generation do, you know. Correct. It's always like this. It's, it's a classic. Hmm. So, so there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And uh, now they co support me like crazy, like yeah. more than anyone else. Like, <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're not complaining at all. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Um, but... Um, and I, I also want to uh, talk about the point about showing off because I'll, I'll be honest, I am actually showing off. I am showing people I have a Bugatti. I'm showing people I, I have this um, and I'm, I'm showing people this, but for a very, very specific reason. It's to show people that I went from where I was in the supermarket to having this watch in a short period of time by figuring out how the universe works. It's mm. really like a, an A to Z, like step by step. Like it's like, you know, it's, it's like an instruction manual. It's like so simple. It's so mm. easy to, to get this, to get anything you want in life. And most people don't care about watches. Maybe they want to have a very beautiful horse. Maybe they want, um, I don't know, a, a beautiful, a beautiful home. A beautiful home. home. <laughs> yeah. Guys. Their dream villa. Yeah. You know? He can teach you how to make the money and I yeah. can teach you how to spend it really, really well. <laughs> yeah, but I think um, it's important to, um, to um, be inspired by other people's success, yeah. which I was. So again, I, going back to when I was in a supermarket, I was consuming content from rich people. Manny Koshman, um, producer Michael, Jun Olsen, who else? A um, couple of other guys. And they are rich and they're showing their wealth. And that was perfect. It helped me understand how I, uh, how I could yeah. organize my life. And on social media, you connect with these people as well. I mean like what you and Sman touched upon previously that even if you don't know those people just being on social mm. media or just consuming their content makes you feel like you know them or at least makes you learn from their personality traits yeah. makes you know it, it, it allows you to follow their footsteps if anything yeah so so them I followed mostly for uh, like um, I the, followed them for visualizing social media strategy as well I think must have uh, uh, that came later I would say like, I followed them mostly just to like visualize my dream life because I didn't even know 
even if I make a hundred million, like what should I buy then? You know. Yeah. So I wanted to have some examples. Yeah. So then, if you watch their vlogs, you can see their private jets, their Jacob and Co watches, their uh, Bugattis, and like cool stuff, you know. Yeah. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll take this. I'll have that, like this, you know. I really like. I was ordering from the universe, just like yeah. going to the restaurant, making your dream life. Not really. And I want to reverse engineer that and understand yeah. how do I really make like that money. I, I I'm not even exaggerating. I think. Um, ordering things from the universe it's like going to the restaurant you, you go and you order something and then you believe it's going to come because mm. the chef is going to make it it will take some time uh, but if don't doubt it like don't lose faith if, if you if you stop believing it and walk away then you're not going to get the steak 100%. you have to sit down and wait wow. patiently for it to come and arrive uh, it will come and the same is with the universe God whatever you want to call it you know like life source um, there's a good force that want to help you but you have to allow uh, the universe or God to help you get what you want. Uh, so you order things, you, you believe, you have the energy inside of you as if it already took place, as, as if you already have it, and um, you know, keep that energy. And then um, if you keep having the belief and faith, like uh, putting water on a seed, yeah. over time it will happen. Cool. Um, but people usually they stop uh, watering the, the plants too early and they say well nothing happened yeah. but they don't get it like the, the root system takes time and things are happening even though you don't see it on the surface mm. same with ordering let's say let's say this uh, watch for example in the very beginning when I visualized it there was nothing even remotely close to any opportunity around me that could even come close yeah. to paying for even the wristband of this watch <laughs> you know yeah. so like but, but I didn't allow that doubt to, to stop me so I kept watering. Like water means basically, in my opinion, like the thoughts and the, the, um, the emotion of, of having it already. So I keep doing that every day. It, honestly, two minutes per day, I think, is enough. Yeah. Be, you don't have to do the whole day, you know? Yeah, of course. Just two, three minutes per day with intention, you know? Uh, that's putting water on the seed. And over time, the root system will start developing. The universe will start organizing things in the back. You know, it could take six months, could be two months, could be one year, could be five years. It's, it's in its own divine timing. It's not up to your human brain to make sense of it. Um, but over time, things will be arranged. And with faith and belief, um, the opportunities will come as they came for me and for many people before me. That's how I learned this. Uh, and eventually, if you just take the right actions and keep believing and, uh, and meet the universe halfway by by taking some action and taking the opportunities, eventually you will get everything you're visualizing. That's the important key. Because when you think about it, then you have to make those actions. You need to do those things that will allow those things to happen yeah. as well. But of course, having the goal is the most important part. Yeah, that's uh, knowing step where you one. want to go yeah. is very important. Otherwise, you're just going to be wandering in space. Not yeah. going, oh. Someone without a goal will never make it. Of course. Mm. You will never make it. Maybe you'll make some money, but you will never actually have a successful like um, passionate like life you need a goal you need a, a, a vision very important so Carl touching upon this what next what is it that you dream about now I mean now you have the watch you have the Bugatti you have uh, I'm sure a great uh, portfolio of different investments what is your next step because I know you are a very passionate individual uh, who loves to dream big so what's the next big dream well, first of all, I would say that I, I like to keep my um, my goals and visions mostly for myself. Um, I think it's important to like keep some things private. You know, it's like mm. it's your dream, your vision. Let let the success speak for itself. Um, you know, speak with people that can directly help you in your vision. Uh, but the rest you can kind of keep for yourself. But um, but many of my goals now, of course, some of them are still financial. I think it's always healthy to have financial goals. But uh, more so, I would say they're on personal level, relationships and like how to become a better uh, friend or boss or, or, you know, things where I can really improve because yeah. I always want to strive to become a better person and the best version of myself that I can possibly be. Um, and being rich doesn't make you a better person. Of Actually, course. there are many real douchebags out there that are rich, right? Yeah. Like there are horrible people that are rich. We meet them all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, they worry. exist out there. <laughs> Um, so, so being rich has nothing to do with being a good human being um, or being a good version of yourself. Uh, it just, it's nice to have money because you're free, you can do what you want, right? Uh, but um, everything has to come from within and, and there are certain things I can improve upon, you know? I've made mistakes, I've treated some people poorly, I, I know this already and 
probably sometimes I don't know it because I have to work on myself. So there are certain things where I, I know I have to work on it. And, and those, um, those are sometimes even tougher than making money, to be honest, because it's like, you know, really reprogramming your, your, your being um, and your, your, your actions and stuff. All right, interesting. Um, so I even want to talk about CryptoJobs.com. That is one of your uh, babies that you've put on the uh, Formula 2 car as well. So how did the idea for CryptoJobs come out? Okay, so and, and, and tell our viewers a little bit more about CryptoJobs. Yeah, okay, so CryptoJobs.com is um, a CryptoJobs portal, job board, where people can um, apply for jobs and they can post jobs within the crypto community, but it can also be outside of crypto, like Web3, AI, could be everything in tech, really. Okay. Uh, but I invested a lot of money into the domain, CryptoJobs.com, because I really wanted to take this business serious. And the, the idea came because, um, first of all, I've invested in, like you said, over 400 crypto companies, which is way too much, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I've also co-founded some companies, and there, I've seen a lot of um, hiring and firing and uh, expanding. And uh, during one specific time, back in the bull market, I was hiring so many people that I thought, like, why don't I create a place where people can hire because there is no like go-to place. So um, I, I just set up a team and I, I bought the domain and I, I thought, you know, I have millions of followers. I know the CEOs of uh, the biggest exchanges in crypto and, and other uh, crypto companies in crypto. So I thought I have basically everything it takes to at least get it started. Yeah. Um, and now it's already grown to become, I think, very soon the biggest crypto job board, if not the biggest already, wow. in terms of traffic and, and uh, in terms of um, signups and... Uh, um, yeah, so I, um, it, it's a passion project of mine. I don't make so much money from it. It's, it's not like a multi-billion dollar idea, but it's a strategic company. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, being part of the fundamentals of crypto, you know, really being part of the, the crypto industry on a very fundamental level. You know, the humans are the crypto. Of course. You know, 100%. the blockchain is one thing, but the people that built it, that we're talking, that's the real fundamentals yeah. of, of crypto, you know, the, the, the people driving the, 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 the crypto industry. And something, something I like to say usually is, because um, people say all the time, crypto is the future. Uh, you say it, I say it, if you go on the street, most people will say, yeah, crypto is the future, Bitcoin is the future. But someone has to build it. Yeah. Someone mm. has to be there every single day and hire the people, assemble a team, have a vision, execute on it. And I want to be that person. And I know many people that are like that. And um, I like to be part of that community of builders in crypto. So CryptoJobs.com is uh, another company of mine where I, I want to be part of the future. I want to um, accelerate the crypto adoption, which is inevitable. But still, someone has to be there and build it. Of course. And um, I want to help companies make it smoother. Very cool. Uh, that's interesting about CryptoJobs.com. But also, what is it? Because I'm sure you're meeting so many people. Uh, you know, because of CryptoJobs.com and they're always pitching you ideas. Is that how you ended up investing in 400 companies? Well, in the very beginning, I just saw that um, I need to invest in crypto companies because it's the future. And then I made some investments uh, very quickly. In the previous bull market, I made such crazy returns on some of those investments. Hmm. Like, think what are the multiples? Well, you don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. Or maybe you do. Then we'll stop, <laughs> maybe, we'll stop doing maybe, what we're doing. Maybe <laughs> we do want to know this. <laughs> okay, so I have some extreme examples. Mm, um, okay. But then, of course, on average, I made maybe like, let's say, 5 to 10x on like uh, the bulk of those investments, usually, wow. uh, which is already incredible, right? For like yeah, traditional yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But some of them went to zero as well, to be frank. Of course. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, but it's a numbers game. If you get a yeah. few of them right, you're still making way more. Exactly. But, uh, but I will tell you now that I, I had a few investments that made up to 500x. Wow, wow. But unrealized gains. So on the top, they made 500x. I was able to, to take some profits, but almost everything was locked up. So mm. like 80% of the tokens have been locked up. So even to today, I can't sell most of those tokens. So on the very peak of the bull market, I was very wealthy. Mm. Very wealthy. Like, I, I'm not sure people made so much wealth in such a short period of time, like ever. Yeah. I must, yeah. It must be some kind of... Guinness World Record, but it was unrealized wealth, so mm. I couldn't actually sell it. So it wasn't, it wasn't. It was real, on paper. On paper, paper mm. gains. Mm. So I would never pretend like that was my actual net worth because it was not. Mm. Even if I wanted, I would not be able to liquidate that. But so it feels good to look at that. It was fun. <laughs> I was like, oh, no way! Like, this is crazy. Am I a billionaire? Really? 
It was, Damn, I didn't even know. <laughs> it was uh, mind blowing, and I will also actually um, be honest and say that it gave me some sh- hubris. I made some mistakes back then because I thought I was the king of the world. I thought I made money quicker than anyone else. I'm the next Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah. But what I failed to understand is that I was not alone. There were so many people who made the exact same gains. You know, it, I didn't make most of that money because I was smart. I was just at the right time right, making right. those investments. My, my smart money came from like the business side. Hmm. But putting this money to this like casino of altcoins, yeah. um, the bulk of that money was made through some kind of luck, I would say. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say everything I did was luck, but, but this was luck. Making 500x on an altcoin, that's luck. Yeah. Don't ever have anyone pretend like they're the, uh, yeah. the, the <laughs> next Warren Buffett for that. You know? yeah. She yeah. buy in the three yeah, days. Buy- <laughs> like, no. Yeah. Um, well, one thing, you just talked about the companies. What do you look for in a company when you're investing? Okay, so in the very beginning, when I did my due diligence myself, I was always uh, first very picky on what um, niche. So I always looked for a niche. So for example, today um, I'm looking for AI. That's my like uh, preferred niche okay. and crypto gaming, those two. Yeah. Uh, back like two years ago, it was DeFi. Uh, another time was something else. So I, I pick a niche and then I actively look for, for investments. Uh, the most important thing is uh, the team. First of all, if it's an anonymous team, it's out already. I'm not going to give them a dollar because mm. uh, usually it's a scam. Yeah. Um, and then um, if they are public and they're there, let's do some due diligence, see their previous experience. Do they have previous exits? Do they have uh, crypto knowledge? Do they have, you know, certain things. There, there are some so. things I want to see. People are the key, once again. Like it's what, everything, What actually. you touched upon previously as well. If you have the right team behind the right product, mm-hmm. they are a lot more likely to be successful. I will tell you why. Because, look, even if you have a great business idea, things change. The market changes, um, demand changes, supply Correct. changes. So right place, right time with them. Well, you can have an amazing product, but if you have a team that is not able to change with trends or deal with challenges, then the best product in the world will fail. Yeah. But even if you have a medium product or even a poor product, if you have an incredible team with great experience and a great vision and also good teamwork, chemistry between each other, when challenges come, the market changes, uh, demand changes, some unforeseen disasters, a great team can sit down and, and brainstorm, make things happen, and, and uh, even thrive through uh, struggles. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very important to understand that teams can adapt hmm. and, and even sometimes... I've Pivot seen, as well, move yeah, around. I've seen many times where a business idea changes three times until the finished product. Mm. And that's because the team is smart enough to understand that the first idea was maybe not the best. Yeah. We had to change. And sometimes it was very good in the beginning, but then the market changes and you need to yeah. adapt. Yeah. And then you need a great team to, to realize it and execute on that. And that's why I think a uh, team is uh, the most important thing. So now you literally sit down with the teams and you follow up with them um, you know, in the beginning or do you let them do what they're doing because you trust them uh, well, based on now, their experience? Well, everyone can make basic math. I made 400 investments in companies. I'm not doing that, uh, that due diligence anymore because I don't have that time. Yeah. That, that's a full-time job. Even like I have like almost, I think, still five people now doing only my investments. So, you know, I don't have that time anymore. I, I focus on building my businesses. Okay. And then I have my investment team uh, where my strategy is put in place. So they're maintaining my strategy. Hmm. And then we're doing some, of course... Um, um, brainstorming together sometimes, but but they give me recommendations now based on what we've done previously. Okay, Carl. Uh, in terms of the next big opportunity, you were talking about gaming. Can we learn more about that? What do you think? Well, yeah. So I think, like I said, I always look for for good trends to invest in, and um, right now I can see crypto gaming as a huge trend. Okay. AI, artificial intelligence, as well. So those are the two sectors I've deployed a lot of capital into in the past like um, six months. Um, And I think crypto gaming especially is very interesting because first of all, gaming is a massive, massive industry. Traditional Web2 gaming is huge. It's uh, nine times bigger than the music industry. Nine times bigger than the music? Wow. Revenue. And three times bigger than movies. And... Three times bigger than movies? Yeah, and when you think about it, it becomes very um, easy to understand because 
when you go to a movie, you, you, you buy a ticket and you watch it, you, yeah. you're not going to pay again to watch it again. Uh, Netflix, you buy a monthly $9 or something, whatever. Yeah. Um, music, same. You're like subscribing, you go to a concert maybe. You don't spend more than like on a yeah, one of time basis like this. Yeah. Gaming, however, you start a game and you're recurring, start buying and yeah, buying and spending buying and spending. Things. And you're on it all the time. Yeah, people get, you know, really into it. Like they have like really like, you know, they love it, mm. you know. Um, and um, the, the time you spend with a game is more time than you spend with um, a movie. For sure. You know, a movie is two hours. A game, people spend uh, tens of hours, if sometimes hundreds or thousands of hours even. Like, you, you know, know, I've never played a game on you, on, 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 on the PlayStation no. or on the... The only game I've ever played is Counter-Strike. I don't know if you remember Counter-Strike. Yeah, yeah, Back in the day, it was on our on, PC. On our PC. Yeah. We used yeah, to go yeah. to these gaming... Uh, cafes. Uh, gaming cafes where we would play for hours. That is the only game I ever played. And I never had a PlayStation. Yeah. I never... Uh, my parents never bought me a PS1, PS2, PS3. I think at that... <laughs> when I wanted a PlayStation, they never bought me one. And then my younger brothers, they... Uh, I had a PlayStation, but we just didn't it. have that culture at home to... Yeah. Play games. Yeah, so it's an industry that I don't know too much about. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, I think most men played at least some games. Yeah. But, yeah. but I would say the vast majority played a lot, to be of honest. Of course, like, a lot. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm the odd one out. So when I, I sit so, my yeah. friends, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they always talk about, hey, we, go, we, uh, we have to sit on FIFA. And I'm like, man, I just can't get the controls <laughs> of this freaking PlayStation <laughs> controller, you know? I can't program my fingers to move left, right, and then yeah, up. I was, and then. I was never a FIFA fan, actually. I, I, I like more strategic games, and okay. uh, I played Need for Speed and Guitar. Oh, and Need for Speed, yeah. Need for Speed, I played when I was a kid. I yeah. love yeah, so yeah. Need for Speed, I did play. Yeah. I'm guilty. Yeah, and um, uh, Warcraft 3, I was playing as well. Okay. So I was playing some games, and but I think so. Gaming is massive, it's huge. Um, and um, Web 3, crypto is massive as well, it's growing like hmm. exponentially. So when you combine these two industries, uh, gaming, which is growing, crypto, which is growing together, you get, like, in my opinion, a, um, a huge new, like, multi trillion dollar economy just within crypto gaming. Because the gaming space is massive and gaming can become much better hmm. and more efficient with blockchain because people can own their actual assets within the game and uh, people can actually um, increase the value of their assets and, and in a way make money on it, yeah. you know. Uh, so in gaming, Web3 will make a big shift and that's what I've realized and many people have realized. That's why that's like a big trend right now and, and many people are talking about it. Um, and artificial intelligence is yet another of trend that is also like logically going to, to change the world in many ways. It and already is. It yeah. Already, exactly. I'm, I'm, uh, I see that in my companies, for example, I tell them use AI for, for whatever, like make, make, make things, things more easier. efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the tools that are available. Chat GPT, you know. Yeah, it's uh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, 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 I got so much stuff from ChatGPT now, you know, I just asked quite, the first time I tried it and I didn't understand it and I'm like, what is this? Everyone's talking about it. Mm. And then I started using it and now I'm, now I'm hooked. Yeah. I'm literally on chat. GPT is always open and I keep asking like random questions and work related stuff and it really helps. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what advice do you have, Karun Felt, for the people who are watching that want to get into the crypto space as well? Um, what are the few keys of success that you can give to those young viewers out there? So first of all, I think um, I can talk about crypto um, as the second part, but the first part, I would say the key to success is to first of all decide that you're going to be successful. If you don't make the decision, it's not going to happen. Like you first need to decide. And the energy of deciding is very powerful hmm. because you're, you're sending a message to the universe that I believe it's possible because I decided I'm going to do it. Without the decision, you're, you're just, you know, taking it things as it, go, as it goes and the comfort zone will consume you. Um, so decide. And then taking action is also very powerful energy because taking action, again, sends a message. It's possible. I believe it's going to happen because otherwise you wouldn't take action. Mm. So the simple act of taking action in any direction sends a message showing confidence, which has a very, like... Um, high frequency um, uh, vibration which, uh, which will help you uh, move mountains. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a form of faith, you know. 
Mm. And like they say in the religious scriptures, faith moves mountains. Oh, and it's sure. actually, it really is like that, you know. The, the, the simple fact of believing yourself, uh, taking action, uh, deciding, that is faith in yourself and it's faith in, in your future and in the universe and, and uh, God or, or however you want to phrase it. Uh, so that's very important. That's step number one. Um, and this comes way before you have any clue what to do. Mm. Like this has to come before you even know what to do. I made these decisions before I even knew that Bitcoin existed. Mm. I made my money through Bitcoin and crypto, but when I decided I'm going to be successful and wealthy and free and whatever, I had no clue Bitcoin. It was, was going to happen, crypto or something else. Exactly. Your mind started yeah. attracting those type of things that could exactly. lead to wealth. Exactly. So I made the decision and I just, in a way, told the universe, you know, you show the way. Whatever it is, I'll, you know, I'll go that route. I will go based on intuition, based on the opportunities that, that arise. Um, and um, yeah, long story short, I, I, I happen to, to find crypto and I happen to, to have all these ideas, all these business ideas and, and uh, investments. And, and that was my journey. That was my story. Um, but when people think that they want to become successful, they think they should go to me and ask for the blueprint um, on my story, but actually it's not right. Like you have to fulfill your destiny. This was my destiny. Um, and I think it's never good to, to just copy someone else yeah. because it's not your story. It's not your, mm. like it, you, you lose your own identity and it's not, I, I think you're, you're then chasing the wrong, uh, the wrong goal and wrong direction. And uh, I think the risk of failure is just much bigger. I think it has to come from within and f from the universe as intuition and, and such. Plus, I even feel like the opportunities that you had, let's say even a year back or even two years back or five years back, are different from the opportunities that will arise in the future. For the people yeah, that are watching. Yeah, that's more surface I mean, levels. Yeah, thing I mean, I'm, saying, I mean yeah. What, the steps that you followed won't be the exact same, but yeah. it's the mindset, it's the belief, it's the sense of direction that people have to believe that they will achieve I think that what we touched upon this podcast, I think is a very, very important and integral part of getting success. And I think for all the viewers out there, they will really appreciate this. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun discussing all of this, Carl, with you, you know, uh, seeing someone that young to have achieved so much, you know, and I think the little fundamentals of success, um, you know, are the few nuggets of wisdom I think our viewers will take back. So thank you so much, Carl, for thank taking you, out bro. the time. Thank you for your time, and you, you definitely inspired us for sure. <laughs> I, now. Uh, thank you so much, Carl. Great. That was, that was a good lot day, of fun. Good episode. good episode. And guys, like every time, don't forget to like this episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And let us know in the comment section about what you think. If you have any further questions that you, know, you felt that we forgot to ask, Carl, so make sure uh, you guys write that in the comment section below. And like every time, guys, see you soon for another great podcast. Take Thank care. you.